Hi everybody, it's Jeff here again. Today we're going to show you how to tell if a wall is load-bearing or not. This question comes up a lot, especially with first-time uh, remodelers, people who are remodeling their house or flipping a property, is before you go tearing into a wall in a kitchen to make it an open concept or something like that, how do you tell if it's a load-bearing wall? And what is a load-bearing wall? Well, first of all, a load-bearing wall is a wall that is supposed to carry the weight of, say, the rafters above it, or the, uh, you know, the ceiling, or a second floor even above that. So, the best way to show you how to find one is to first show you the anatomy of what a load-bearing wall looks like. So, this is, we're looking at one right now. And let me just first show you the components of, an, of your typical wall, and I'll show you right here. So your average wall starts with the bottom plate, this, the, some people call it the base plate. Then you have studs that go all the way up to the top, and then you have a top plate. Okay, uh, now there's too much mud for me to show you on there because they had some termite damage that we're going to be repairing there. But let me go ahead and show you over here. There's your top plate on this one. And if you look closely, right above the top plate, you'll see there's another 2x4 that's on there. You're probably wondering, well, hmm, why, why is that? Well, the reason why we have those up there is for uh, building safety. When you build a building, theoretically, your rafters, which are these right here, no, I'm sorry, these are joists, we call these joists. Uh, the rafters are the ones that are way up high that run along the, the roof line. These joists here, should theoretically be straight over every one of the studs so that your point load, they call it, the point load comes straight down the stud and it goes all the way down to the ground and it gets pushed into the ground. Now, this is a cement slab below us. If there was a basement below us, I'm willing to bet you would go straight down to the basement and you should see poles or something right below this point to carry that point load all the way down to the slab. That's another way you can tell if, the, if your wall ha is a load-bearing wall. So in this case here, um, method number two to tell is we always send people up to the attic to look. Well, do you have any floor joists that are running perpendicular to the wall? And if they are, that usually means it's a load-bearing wall. Now, if you look back over here to this wall, 90 degrees out of phase, this is the side wall to the bedroom you can see the floor joist is running parallel to it. And there's another one here. So there's no load really resting on top of this wall here. So this is not a load bearing wall, even though it has that second cap plate. So let me uh, reiterate here, why do we need that second cap plate? Well, in many cases, in fact, almost all cases, we know that the joists are not spaced evenly over the stud. And so if they're not spaced evenly over the stud here, uh, what would happen is like these are pretty close to the stud. That's not too bad But what if it was in the middle? And if you didn't have that cap plate, what do you think would happen to that joist? It would tend to bow down and put a lot of pressure onto that top plate here Which is this guy right here on top of the studs and it could theoretically break under the weight of whatever's up there so that's why they put that extra cap plate up on top there the upper plate there it get, makes it a lot thicker, so now you're dealing with a 4x instead of a 2x. So it provides a lot more strength and resistance to shearing. Now, some of the, the builders, there's some home builders that are getting really good in uh, uh, technical and making their home building more efficient. And they're coming up with ways of, for example, doing 25-inch spacing instead of these are 16-inch spacing between the studs. But they got to use a thicker drywall. To do that some builders have come up with a way that if they know they can guarantee every one of these joists will go right directly over a stud they don't need to use that second plate up there that cap plate so that will save them a lot of money over the course of one house and then many houses across a neighborhood that they're building at once if they don't have to keep putting all of these uh, cap plates up so those are things that that they're able to do but for you and your house, your house is probably going to look like this. Now, here's something that people are probably going to, need to do. You have a load-bearing wall here, and you're going to probably cut into the studs and put a doorway here. That's just exactly what the builder did here. And this is a textbook scenario, what you see here. 
So, but in order to do that, if you cut this stud, this, this, is, this is a um, cripple, they call this. This cripple was meant to go all the way down to the floor, like a regular stud. But if you cut that, that means you have to still provide a way for the load to make it back down to ground. So the way they do this is by adding this header plate here. So you see how you get this header here? And the header plate is supported by this jack stud. They, um, some people call it a trimmer. But this is a jack stud, and this tall stud here is called the king stud. So if you think about your you're playing cards, the more the big main one is the king one, and then this is the secondary one, the jack stud. But this jack stud performs a very important function for you, and that is it holds this header. So if you look at the header here, see how it rests right on that jack stud, and then it rests on top of this other jack stud. And then you have another plate on top of that header as well. So any load that's right there at that point comes down the cripple and transverses to both sides of the header. And at the same time, both loads, probably divided in half, come straight down the jack stud to ground. So that's how you are supposed to cut a hole in a wall. And that's why it's very dangerous and that's why there's permit requirements. They, the building codes require that you know what you're doing here. And a lot of times the, the building department at your, your city will reject your, your design because it's gotta be signed off by an engineer or an architect that knows what's going on and knows whether this is done uh, properly or not. Because you can't just go cutting into a wall. And what if there was a huge span going 10, 15 feet across? Then you may have to have a special LVL beam made. Some people have metal beams made. Uh, and you can't just say, well, I'm going to throw a couple of you know, pieces of wood up here. That's all got to be calculated. All those loads are calculated by the engineer and the architect. So this is what a load-bearing wall looks like. Now, we can see it because it's all naked. We've pulled off the drywall. So how do you tell when the drywall's up? Well, that's your main method up there is looking in the attic above it if you can get to it and see if there's any any members like these floor joists here resting on top of the wall. And if you have a basement, go down in the basement and look at underneath your wall underneath. There should be continued support because the entire load has to carry from there all the way down to this floor and all the way down to the floor below it. And so let me just point out a couple of things to you here. So this builder did it correctly. You see how the header is resting on top of this member? I've seen a lot of stupidity, folks. I mean, a lot of really dumb people out there that they side shoot the nails into the header here. Instead of it resting on top of the jack stud, it's nailed in like this. So now only the nails are holding the load. And that's not allowed. That's a violation of building codes. And if your inspector came in and saw you doing that, they'd probably issue you a stop work order immediately on the spot. So anyway, I hope this helps you answer the question here, and I hope I've given you a, a good education here on this. And if you have any questions, just leave them here in the comments. And please subscribe to my channel. We'll be putting up a lot more helpful videos for you.